Ready? Okay. So when we talk about um, terrestrial ecosystems, terrestrial meaning land, and aquatic ecosystems, there is a whole lot of overlap between those two. Those two relate with each other, right? So don't ever think of environmental science as this is a compartmentalized thing and you know land ecosystems are over here and they have nothing to do with aquatic ecosystems. That's just not true. Things are far more complicated than that. All the things we've talked about in this video series, the turbidity, runoff, erosion, weathering, those are all this overlapping between the land and the water. And one of the things that affects how land and water work together is soil particle size. Now there are only three soil particles is, and I'm gonna do this for a reason, clay is the smallest particle size, silt is the middle particle size, and sand is the largest particle size. They have defined limits. There's a, there's a top end and a bottom end of what is sand, okay? If you get over that limit, then it's a small rock. And when you can't say rocky soil, that's not a soil type because that could be uh, rocks from this size to the size of this whole truck right here. There's no end limit to what a rock is. So we're, are we, you know, it could be anything. But sand has limits. Silt has limits. Clay has limits. And you can look those up. You can pause this video and look those up on the internet. They're right there for you. It's also in the textbook. But I'm going to talk about how water moves differently based on particle size. There's one important thing that you need to know before I go into this. As particle size goes up, then um, as particle size goes up, porosity goes up, pore size goes up. And I'm going to explain what that means. So let's say I've got these two big pieces here. There's only so many ways that I can fit those to where there are no gaps. If they were smaller, I could get less and less gap. The smaller I go, then the tighter I can get the gaps. And the gap is called a pore. So as the particle size goes up, then I've got bigger gaps, bigger pores. Now, some particles can be compressed. Now let's talk about clay first. This is clay. This is just the black clay that is natural here in Texas, uh, in this part of Texas. And I can break it and you'll, you'll see it there. Now, these particles are very, very small and they can be compressed into this. This is uh, a compressed or, or um, compacted clay. And this is from heavy machinery. This is where a bulldozer went over the clay and it's created a layer of compacted clay. And you're gonna see how water behaves differently between the two. So I'm gonna show you on a piece of just normal clay that is not compacted. When I pour water on it, it runs off. But you can see it's starting to sit and start to soak in and be uh, into the clay. It soaks in a little bit, but a great deal of it runs off. It runs off because the pore size is very small. There's less holes for the water to run down into, these pores and gaps. Now, the compressed or, or compacted clay, uh, all those gaps that were there, what little bit of gap there was has been closed up because the heavy machinery has forced those gaps shut. Runs off entirely, does not soak in hardly at all. I can shake that off and now it's almost entirely dry. So we get huge runoff events, which would, things like this, too much vehicle traffic, heavy machinery traffic, and, and things like that causes this compacted soil, and that's gonna lead to things like flash floods, huge runoff events. As we talked about in the earlier video, the force or, or velocity of water causes more runoff, more turbidity, more oxygen loss, all those things that we talked about with turbidity. If we keep that from happening, then it will run off, but not as bad. And the water becomes available for our plants. Now, if we go up in particle size, I don't have silt, but I do have sand. Sand has its own issues. Now, you'll notice here that when I pour the water on the sand, a little bit may run off, but it just runs right through it. All right, and that's run that's run down through the bottom. 
Now, sand is, is very, very difficult to compress. And if I, if I get some fresh sand here that's not dry, and I can try to mash it if I want to, hard as I can, but then it just falls apart. So this is a very loose material that is subject to running off because it, it doesn't hold its structure. However, it also won't suspend because the particles are so big that if I put it into water, then it just poof, it's created a turbidity problem. So there are pros and cons with every soil type. What is important to have is a diversity of soil type and somewhat even amount of clay, silt, and sand. As you get into pure clay, you start to have problems with it. If you get into pure sand, you start to have problems with it that are unique to that soil issue. If we've got a whole bunch of sand, we're going to get a lot of groundwater recharge because water is going to go right through it into our groundwater. And that's good, but we can also have a stability problem where things run off or collapse because the sand, the sand just won't hold its structure. Here, we might be able to build homes on it. We might be able to build cars on it or drive cars on it. But then we get issues like this where we're going to end up with flash floods and turbidity problems. It will hold its structure enough to be to, for human development, but that comes at a price.